Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about traffic signs, road signs. Yes, it's not tricky. It's not a mystery. <laughs> read the road signs. You'd be surprised how many people don't read traffic signs. Tonight, we're going to give you an overview and information about gathering information at a glance from traffic signs. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there Smart Drivers, welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about traffic signs. Goose is here, DC is here, Rocky's here from Windsor, Ontario. Neptune, hello. Michael's here, Jim Bob. Hello, you look sad, Jim Bob. Uh, my friend Katie and Margaret from Brooklyn. How are you, Margaret? And Tim is here. Tim was here a while ago, but I, maybe he got uh, confused with good old daylight savings time. And uh, Pink Pasta Panda's here, and Pink Pasta Panda passed the driver's test last week congratulations on that and yes daylight savings time it's also pie day not like eat pie yummy pie like fruit pie uh, it's 3.14 mathematical equation Greek symbol pie <laughs> you know that thing that used to drive us crazy when we were in high school and uh, doing math and trying to pass it when we were in university uh, yeah that didn't happen for me so there we go. All kinds of fun stuff going on, and uh, I don't know what the weather's like for you, where you live, but here where we live, uh, it's trying to be spring. So it's very nice here, and hopefully all this pandemic craziness in which the world we live is going to go away. Uh, and uh, they've actually re um, reduced some of the restrictions here in the province of British Columbia so maybe for you as well that they've released or reduced lifted some of the restrictions that's what I was trying to say uh, for you in the area where you live as well so that is really nice Swift Boy is here hello and JT has his driver's test on Tuesday excellent uh, Daryl has his driver's test in the morning good luck on your driver's test all the best and uh, Corey should be here shortly. Corey will put up the video for you on the pre-trip inspection. Make sure you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle before you go down for your driver's test because you don't want to go down uh, and and find that you're denied your driver's test because you have something out like a, a you know a brake light or something like that. And and if you have a brake light out, they're easily fixed. You just go to the auto shop store uh, and uh, get a light bulb for the, your make and model of your vehicle and replace it. Usually you can, if you can wield a screwdriver, you can usually replace a brake light in a couple of minutes. Uh, Goose is in Northern Ontario there. Sudbury, yes, Sudbury is in Northern Ontario and he says he's on def, indefinite lockdown yet again. Oh, that's just crazy. Oh, it's, it's starting to wear me out, <laughs> this lockdown. So if you have any questions about driver's test, have any questions about starting your career as a truck or bus driver, or you just want more information about being a defensive driver, a smarter, safer driver, uh, leave us a comment in the comment section there. We'll definitely help you out with all of that. Uh, yes, the presentation's about 10 or 12 minutes. After the presentation, uh, then we come back and the rest, the remainder of the hour, we spend answering any questions you have about any of those topics about driving. We'll do what we can to help you out. Uh, Jim Bob, not doing the pre-trip inspection could be the difference between life and death. Well, <laughs> not quite life and death. You will be allowed to take the driver's test again, but you know, you everything, you're all prepped up, you're all revved up and ready to go for your driver's test, and then you get there, and the driving examiner comes out and does his or her mini pre-trip inspection, and uh, the brake lights aren't working, or you have a tail light out, or you have a headlight out, or the horn doesn't work, and then. Unfortunately, you're denied your driver's test and you have to come back and do it again, which is a real, real bummer. Swift Boy, I have my G2 now. I watched some of your videos and they were very helpful and they have made me pass my driver's test. Congratulations, Swift Boy. That's awesome on passing your driver's test. So happy that we could help out and with that enterprise and help you to be successful. Uh, Daryl, what do we need to bring for my road test and how long is the test will be? Uh, Daryl? Where is your driver's test? Where are you in the world with your driver's test? You have to bring money, you have to bring your license, and I would recommend that you bring another piece of identification for your driver's test. 
and uh, show up about 20 minutes early. Make sure that you go to the toilet before you head down for your driver's test because the toilets may or may not be open at the test center where you're going to be taking your driver's test. So do all of that. Asia, my friend, how are you? All right, so let's get started with the PowerPoint presentation and then we'll come back and answer questions uh, about driver's tests and all that good stuff. All right, so tonight we're talking about dri uh, drivers, road signs, traffic signs along the roadway, and these are categorized. These are more or less universal around the world. They mean the same thing, have the same uh, right-of-way rules applied, and uh, warn you of hazards and obstructions along the roadway that you need to pass around, you need to slow down, uh, how fast you go around a curve, and those types of things. And these, in combination with... Uh, traffic lights and road markings will guide you safely along the roadway okay for those of you who are new to smart drive test my name is Rick August I was a truck driver in the 1990s running freight between uh, Ontario Canada and the United States I did run most of what's called the lower 48 uh, that is everything excluding Alaska and Hawaii it's pretty tough to get a truck to Hawaii but the lower 48 I became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Most of my instruction has been with big trucks, uh, air brakes, log books, buses, those types of things. Uh, I have done some specialty training with people with hand controls. Next week I'm going to Calgary to, to shoot some videos uh, with my friend Nelson there. He has a driving school and he has a vehicle with hand controls. So we're going to do with that. 2006, I went back to university, got a graduate degree in legal history. Uh, and legal history is the study of policing, courts, and prisons, as you may or may not know. My expertise is in uh, policing as it relates to traffic, oddly enough. Uh, while I was going to university at the University of Melbourne in Australia, I drove buses for Greyhound and one of the regional bus lines there as well. So I have experience driving buses as well. And if you want to know more about me, you can head over to the Smart Drive Test website about halfway down the homepage there. You'll find a link to my autobiography. New video this week, the third driving lesson with Gavin. There's five lessons in total. And in the third driving lesson, we worked on uh, turns and lane changes in preparation for his driver's test. Also in that video, I did a mock, uh, not a mock, not a mock driver's test. I did a demonstration for him on how he had to do uh, lane change and turning for the purposes of his driver's test. So there's a lot of good information along that. Uh, uh, um, there's a lot of good information in that video if you haven't seen it have a look at it and as well there are chapters in all of the videos now if you find a video here on the smart drive test uh, YouTube channel that doesn't have chapters along the bottom if you just scroll along this the scrub line there you'll see the different chapters uh, let me know and I'll put those in for you all right so the way that road signs convey information is the shape of the sign, the color of the sign, and the words or symbols thereon. And these are construction signs which have an orange background and the letters and symbols thereon are black. So know that these are the three ways that traffic signs convey information at a glance. And these two construction signs indicate that the lane that you're in is ending on the right and on the left. So like I said, easy information at a glance. Road signs are broken into classifications, regulatory signs, which means that uh, regulatory is the root word of regulatory is regulation, which means it's the law. You have to obey the signs. So traffic signs, railway signs, yield signs, uh, downhill braking signs for large commercial vehicles, these are all regulatory signs. School signs, uh, cautionary signs, uh, lane control signs, and object marker signs, these are all different classifications of driver signs, and we'll talk more a little bit more about detail here in a bit. Object marker or hazard marker obstruction signs, these essentially warn you of fixed objects along the roadway and on which side to pass the fixed object. They're on the end of bridge abutments, they're on concrete traffic islands, uh, anytime that the road juts out, like there's a curb that juts out into the roadway, uh, there's a tree, there's a bridge abutment, an overpass abutment, all those types of things, uh, these will mark these obstructions and tell you on which side to pass. And the way that you know which side to pass is, is that think of yourself, imagine yourself pouring a kettle of water onto the sign in whichever way the, the water runs off is the way that you pass the fixed object. So these are 
important for passenger vehicles. They become critical if you move to a large commercial vehicle, a bus or a truck, or you start pulling trailers with your vehicle, then you're gonna have to pay attention to these object marker signs along the roadway. The first one, as I talked about, was regulatory signs, and these are the signs that you must obey when you're driving. Stop signs, speed signs, railway crossing signs, and brake check signs, as I said, downhill braking for large commercial vehicles. There's a stop area where you have to go in and check your brakes for CDL drivers. So these are the signs that you must obey. And you'll also notice uh, when you're driving along a two lane highway that there's a sign that says slower traffic must stay right. <laughs> That's a regulatory sign. It means you must stay to the right to uh, facilitate traffic flow along the highway and not frustrate other people. Cautionary signs, these are a warning. So if you've been down the road before, you can take them with some note of I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, but anyway, they're not absolute. You don't have to absolutely obey them. However, <laughs> warning signs, overheight signs on bridges and low overpasses and other types of obstructions, 11 feet, 8 inches. If you're driving in the United States of America and you're driving a trailer, a larger vehicle, you need to know that the maximum height is 13 feet, 6 inches. So if you're driving a large commercial vehicle, you are not going to fit under 11 feet, 8 inches. If you insist on going under that obstruction, you're going to turn the vehicle into a convertible. Okay, know that. And you're going to end up in one of those YouTube videos where they show you these low bridges and overpasses where they're always taking the tops off trucks. Uh, some of these are relevant and some not so much. So uh, there's always going to be an exit speed off highways and freeways and that, those types of things. Uh, those are more for big trucks, uh, not so much for passenger vehicles as well. I had a smart driver tell me last week that I was speeding in the... Uh, Roundabout, because the recommended speed for roundabouts is 20 kilometers an hour or 15 miles an hour. And if you're going faster than that, you're breaking the law, when in fact you're not, because it's a cautionary speed. It's a recommended speed, not a regulatory speed. All right, destination signs, overhead signs, uh, and uh, larger vehicles. So you're matching the flow of traffic uh, and you're paying attention to destination signs and overhead signs when you graduate to a larger vehicle. So if you work on a farm and you're have horses, you're going to the horse show or those types of things and you have a large pickup truck, a dually, as it's so much called, uh, as it's called, you're going to have to pay attention to these destination signs. How far is it next to the next town or city or urban area, those types of things. You're also going to have to pay attention to overhead obstruction signs. Lane usage signs. Uh, be sure you're in the correct lane for both a driver's test and when you're driving a larger vehicle. And as well for overhead lane signs, these are going to tell you that you're in the right lane or you're not in the right lane. And if there's two turning lanes to turn left for the purposes of a driver's test and driving larger vehicles, you want to be in the outside lane. That way when you're turning left and you get around to the other side, you're already going to be in the right lane and not going to have to change lanes back. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, these overhead signs are needed at this time of the year in spring when all the road markings are rubbed off the road because of the sand and winter maintenance and whatnot. So you're going to have to pay attention to these overhead signs. And as, as well, you can tell they're white and rectangular in shape, which means that they are regulatory signs and you must obey them. Mile marker signs. These are ones that are often ignored by far too many people. And these are very defensive signs and they will give you a precise location that will match up with your GPS unit. You will know exactly where you are on the roadway. So they will also keep you safe on the freeway and exit numbers are often mile markers, except in the state of New York, where the mile markers and exit markers are not one and the same thing. However, you get on Google Maps and you get on your GPS and you figure out which mile marker you need to get off at if you're trying to navigate to a specific place because it will say you need to get off at exit 53. Well, if you're driving down the road and the numbers are going down and you're at exit 65, you know that you are 7, 12 miles from where you need to get off the freeway. So once you get to about three or four miles away from your exit, exit 63, and you get to exit 65, you know that you got to start getting over to the right in preparation to get off the freeway. So exit numbers are incredibly helpful uh, in knowing how far you are from your destination and defensively so that you can get into the right lane in preparation for getting off the freeway. And we can talk a little bit more about that uh, during question and answers. All right, so good luck on your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. 
All right, we'll get back over here. There we go. All right, so Daryl, uh, when backing up on Peril Park and you hit a curb, is that an automatic fail? Uh, Daryl, it usually is an automatic fail for new drivers because unfortunately what happens is, is that they knock the examiner out of his or her seat. And if you knock the examiner out of his or her seat, yes, indeed, that's an automatic fail. If you touch the curb, that's not an automatic fail. If you touch the curb and you pull forward and you adjust, you're allowed that. You're not allowed banging the curb. Or if you push the rear tire up over the curb, that's an automatic fail too, okay? Uh, Gandhi, can I go straight if I am on the right most lane on a three lane? Are, uh, Gandhi, are you talking about being on a highway or a freeway with three lanes and you're in the right lane? Can you go straight? Of course you can go straight. You don't have to get off the highway or freeway. Uh, Goose, you're most welcome. Uh, David, I just passed my license test after failing two times. It's very simple. Just find someone that speaks the same language with uh, with you and your experience. Excellent. Congratulations, David. We're so glad that we you dropped back and let us know that you passed your driver's test. That's awesome. Uh, I'm sure that you had a, a big celebration on that. Uh, Jim Bob, the railway crossing signs are both warning and regulatory. Uh, Jim Bob, no. The Railway crossing signs are regulatory signs. They're not a warning sign. <laughs> there may be some warning signs in combination with railway signs, but if there's a railway sign, you must scan the railway crossing, ensure that there aren't any trains. If there are lights and there are gates that are down and you go across, that is illegal. You could be ticketed not only by the local police force, but you could also be ticketed by the train cops because here in Canada, in British Columbia where I live, uh, CN Rail, Canadian National Railway, has its own police force here. And uh, there's actually one video, I think it's the parallel parking with cone videos that the CN Rail police officer, the cruiser, actually came into the parking lot because uh, there's a, uh, a tunnel a concrete tunnel down there just behind that parking lot where a lot of the transient population sleep at night because it's underground, right? But they're trespassing on uh, railway property. So they move them along, sort of, so to speak. Uh, Rocky, I haven't told you this before, but I started on October 30th, my first day, and you're watching your videos of road sign classifications. I found it really helpful. <laughs> uh, Yes, we did the last one in October. We, we've done this one a couple of times now, so I just like to do it as a reminder for uh, people that <laughs> help out with the, dry, with the traffic signs because they're incredibly helpful. And they, especially if you're navigating in a place that you haven't been to before, you really need, need to pay attention to the traffic signs. The traffic signs will give you an enormous amount of information. And take it from somebody like me who used to drive uh, without GPS and drive a tractor trailer unit in towns and cities that I've never been to before, uh, you have to pay attention to the traffic signs. You really, you know, it just, it's nigh impossible to do. And, and especially for CDL drivers, you know, a lot of them will be paying attention to their uh, GPS and those types of things, but you really need to look out the glass and, you know, find the signs that are there. Okay. Uh, Daryl, it, it is it best for me to warm up an hour before my driver's test? Uh, Daryl, so the, what I do with students who are going for a driver's test is I take them out uh, about two hours before their, not two hours before their driver's test, but for a two hour block of time of which an hour of that is for the driver's test. So for example, if your driver's test is at noon, I would pick you up at 10.30. I would go out for a drive till about 11.30, have a 10 minute kind of break, and then go in 20 minutes before your test, and then you get everything sorted out, and then you come out, and then you go in for your driver's test. That's how I would do that with a student okay akabar Ak Ab abakar there i didn't say it right i'm sorry hello my friend how are you okay aiden uh if i'm making a right turn with a larger vehicle is it okay to be in the farther lane for a second no it's not aiden <laughs> no please don't do that what you need to do aiden uh, when you come up to the intersection is crowd the left side of the lane. If you're in a larger vehicle, I mean, if you're in a tractor trailer, you might need to go into another lane, but for most vehicles, you're not going to. So you stay left of your lane, drive farther into the intersection, and then you come forward, come back with the tow unit, and then drive into your lane. And most of the time, that'll get a truck and trailer around a corner on a right turn. Okay. Daryl is in a quiet neighborhood. Can we go 30 in BC? No, you can't. If the speed limit is 50 kilometers an hour, you have to do you have to do the speed limit, Daryl. 
uh, unless it's really crowded. And have a look at the mock road test video here on the channel and that you'll see that I'm not doing the speed limit in most of these residential areas because I just can't get it up to 50 because there's just not enough space for me to be able to do that. Uh, Goose, residential versus highway railway tracks, slow down or not? Uh, Goose, if they're not, if there aren't gates and lights, uh, you don't have to slow down. You simply, it's, it's like any other intersection. You just uh, scan the intersection well in advance or scan the railway crossing well in advance Make sure there isn't a train coming and you know but if you do you suspect there's a train then yes you want to slow down cover the brake make sure that you know there's not a train coming and those types of things because you know as you and i probably know goose we've come up to a railway crossing and there's a train sitting there you know quarter mile up the road up the tracks rather and it's just sitting there it's not moving and it's somehow it's activated the lights or whatnot and we, we're not really sure then yes you can slow down but if there isn't really explanation for why you're slowing down, I might suggest that you activate the four-way flashers just to indicate to traffic behind you that you're slowing down or doing something unpredictable. That way you're not going to get rear-ended, right? Okay. Excellent. Ivan, you're confused. What are you confused about, my friend? Uh, David, first thing... Where'd you go? <laughs> it popped up there on me. Uh... Okay, that's weird. It went weird on me. We'll come back to it. I, hey, Rick, you said when there's a blinking red light in all directions of traffic that the first vehicle to get there gets the right of way, but you also said the straight through overturning. Okay, so blinking red light in all four directions, yes. So after... How do I say that? Okay, so what so what I mean, Ivan, is, is that you're right. It's the first vehicle to arrive, but say that the first vehicle to arrive goes, okay? And then there's two vehicles across from each other that are, that are gonna go, and one's gonna turn left and one's gonna go straight through. The one that goes straight through goes, and then the one that turns left goes, okay? So that's the way that that works. I think that's what might be confusing you. So Corey's here, Bricks for Wheels. Uh, Corey is the moderator and does an excellent job of getting up the videos that I suggest for you. And he's put up that video on how to pass a driver's license uh, road test first time. That's the video I suggested you have a look at for residential areas and the speed that you should be driving for the purposes of a driver's test. Okay. Uh, Bob, what's the goofiest thing that you ever happened to you at Jiu Jitsu, Rick? <laughs> what's the goofiest thing? <laughs> it didn't happen to me. But a funny story, well, it's a funny story because, I mean, you know, the, the funniest thing that happened to me is, is that, you know, your hand ends up in places that it shouldn't end up. <laughs> and you just say, oh, you know, oh, I'm sorry about that. So anyway, there's, there's a funny story for you. <laughs> uh, Ryan, just want to come on and say I watched your vids and recently passed my test. Thanks so much. Uh, Ryan, you are most welcome, my friend. That's awesome. Uh, Jim Bob, before turning at an intersection, signal at least 100 feet in advance. Uh, Jim Bob, approximately half a block, uh, which is probably going to be farther than uh, 100 feet. Yeah, so approximately half a block. Okay, there we go. Uh, all that's caught up. All right, so one of the other things that I've been working on here, and I'm looking for my thing here, and I can't find it. There we go. I found it. Okay, so I have been working on, <laughs> Gandhi, it happened to me, I pressed the gas instead of the brake, thanks it was an empty lot, yes, and that's going <laughs> to happen, hopefully you don't turn into, uh, you know, somebody's, you know, turn somebody's business into a drive through uh, yeah, so, uh, what am I, what am I trying to say here? So this weekend, I don't know how it got started, but somehow I got started on t-shirts and some of you may or may not have noticed that on the bottom underneath the videos, there's a little merchandise shelf and I noticed that, you know, previously, 18 months ago or something, I just kind of threw something up there uh, and of course it hasn't been selling anything. So this weekend I spent some time yesterday and today kind of thinking about yesterday, my, yesterday was my day off. So I kind of had this in my head and I started to work on some t-shirts with some sayings on them and those types of things and uh, I'll just uh, throw the link down in the bottom for you but here uh, we'll just transition over here just bear with me 
to the t-shirts and here's the black one so we'll transition over to that so this is what i've been working on is the t-shirts here and i'll get on the right page here and this is what the saying it's basically the tagline i have a couple of more t-shirts that i'm working on with different sayings on them but this is basically the one uh that i've been working on this weekend and got this up and it's actually on the store for sale and that's what's on the front and this is what's on the back so this is the back of the t-shirt is basically the smart drive test logo at the top of the t-shirt and so those are for men and these are the women's with the v-neck and these are basically the same here same logo on them and the back same as on the back with the smart drive test logo so those are available and here is I'll just switch back over here and I'll throw up the here's the link for you for the t-shirts if you're interested in those you can have a look at those and get more information about the t-shirts and those types of things and like I said I have another one two more that I'm working on for t-shirts uh, and you know if you have any suggestions you want a different color of a t-shirt you want a different style of a t-shirt you want a long sleeve those types of things i've got all that sort of thing <laughs> and margaret says make dog hoodies uh yes okay well duly noted margaret i've written that down here on my suggestions because uh basically the stuff that you can make for merch is basically unlimited so uh, those are available. I think they're just getting approval through Teesprings uh, there. And like I said, if you want any different colors, any different styles, those types of things, then we're gonna put those up. Uh, I have one for CDL drivers, one that says uh, fifth gear is my happy place. And then I have another one that says it doesn't take any time out of your day to be nice. And I'll try and get those up by the end of the week, um, going away for a couple of days here this week. So I'll be working more on that. So, okay. Jay, do you know where I can find the score sheets for my state's road test? New Jersey, I can only find CDL score sheets. Okay, you haven't been able to find those. Maybe some of the other smart drivers can help out with the score sheets there in the state of New Jersey. Uh, Sakleem, uh, I recently passed my driving test on March 6th in Victoria. The learning doesn't end after getting your license, though. Thanks, Rick, for your videos. <laughs> and Sakleem, I, I cannot agree with you more. When, once you get your, your license, uh, you know, the real learning begins at that juncture, right? There's a lot to know on your own when somebody's not sitting there telling you which way to go and how to do it and those types of things. So, you know, lots, lots to learn after you get your license for sure. But congratulations on passing your driver's test. Uh, Rocky, second thing I haven't told you is I have started my G1 since I was 16, but I started four years ago. Uh, steering wheel and feet pedal just to get myself nicely well trained. Uh... Rocky, you're going to do awesome, okay? So just, just keep working on it, my friend. Okay. Bear with me. <laughs> CBD, hello. Nice for you to tune in from Paraguay, that's awesome. Isaiah, when you're in a highway and merging onto a faster lane, do you speed up when there's cars in the fast lane? Yes, if you're merging, you do speed up, that's for sure, okay? Love the shirts, awesome, that's great. I'm glad that you do. <laughs> I spent a lot of time fiddling around with those goofy shirts. It takes, it takes a lot of, you know, it's very artistic kind of thing, so it's kind of crazy. Okay, uh, Jay, do you know where I can find... Okay, so you're, you're looking for the score sheets. Uh, we're going to get some help with that. Uh, okay, hand signals. Daryl, right, left, slow down or stop. Sam, been driving for over two years. Your videos helped ease my anxiety over testing. Now I drive an ambulance. Sam, that's absolutely incredible. And uh, so you, where are you in the world, Sam? Uh, you are driving an ambulance, so you had to get a bus license to drive an ambulance. Am I correct about that? Uh, Jack, I'm taking my road test tomorrow. I've been, I'm very nervous. Any tips to help me? Uh, yes, breathe. Uh, Jack, make sure you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle before you head down for your driver's test. Uh, make sure that you bring your license, uh, uh, one more piece of identification just in case they ask, and money. Make sure you bring money because it's going to cost you money to take your driver's test. Uh, it's a fee for your driver's test and it's a fee to administer your driver's test. All right, Swift Boy, I have questions. How does the full G license work? 
Okay, so Swift Boy, are you going for your full G or you want to know how to get your full G? Is that what you're asking me? Sec Gleam, okay, I was really nervous too. I bombed my mock road test prior to passing mine. Just believe in the stuff you've been taught. Speed control, shoulder checks, and observation. Observation. Excellent advice there about a driver's test. Excellent advice. Uh, Gordon, I had a friend who was stopped by the police for an expired license sticker, and he found out he was driving without a license uh, when he escaped handcuffs when he stated that he had it delayed due to a backlog. Uh, yeah, it's not likely they're going to put you in jail for an expired license. They're just most of the time going to give you a fine. But like you said. In this day and age, uh, you know, they're just, you know, this backlog with the pandemic and those types of things. All right. Uh, Bill, you're most welcome. I'm glad we could help out. After all, uh, still having trouble with the perpendicular 90 degree reverse parking despite completing the course. Somehow it seems to work out when I'm with the instructor, but not otherwise. Any tips? Uh one of the things, after all, I might suggest that you do is practice with cones in a parking lot. That way, if you hit the cones, it's not going to be a big deal. The other advice that I give you is to stay tight to the driver's side because the driver's side of the vehicle is your sight side. And you can kind of see along that side of the vehicle. If you take care of the sight side, the passenger side or what we call the blind side of the vehicle is going to more or less take care of itself because you're going to fit into the space, right? So if you stay tight along that driver's side, you're going to find it a little bit easier to get into the backing into the space. The other thing you might want to do is instead of trying to 90 degree back into the space, pull up on a bit of an angle and then that way you can kind of angle into the parking space. You might find that a little bit easier as well. And then the last thing that I always tell new drivers when they're backing into spaces is always try and back in beside another vehicle. That just makes it so much easier than uh, <clears throat> trying to back into an empty parking space without any kind of guides or signposts on either side of you there. Okay, so Corey's put up the pre-trip inspection there. Excellent. Uh, Gandhi, uh, sorry to ask this, which car would be best for road tests, big or small cars? Does uh, small cars make parking or slow speed maneuvers easier? Uh, Gandhi, no, that's not, that is a good question actually. That's a very good question. Mid-sized vehicles are going to work the best. You know, like the size of a Toyota Corolla, uh, Honda Civic, those types of vehicles are going to work best for you. It's just easier to maneuver them and get them in and out of parking lots and those types of things. And, you know, for first time people, I mean, unless you're in the state of Texas where everything's bigger, <laughs> it's just easier than it is to try and say, take a, a big half ton pickup truck or those types of things. So yes, definitely easier with a smaller vehicle. Uh, Sam, based in North Carolina, didn't need any additional license. Uh, the EMT course gives you some experience behind the wheel. Awesome. And that's, that's really great, Sam. <laughs> that just, that's a great story that you're now working, driving an ambulance there in North Carolina. That's really awesome. Uh, Swift Boy, how to get my full light G license? I uh, go next year for it. I just want to know what I need to prepare for. Okay, so Swift Boy, uh, the G license in Ontario, of course, you have to have your uh, G2 for a period of uh, one year, two years, I think it is. I'm pretty sure it's two years. And then it's just another driver's test, exactly what you've already done. They just expect a higher level of experience once you go for your full G license. So it's the same as the, the same as the road test you did previously. There really isn't any difference. It's just that you're gonna need to, uh, you know, show more driving experience and being uh, smoother on the controls and those types of things. That's all they're, that they're looking for. Okay. Uh, Rocky, well, it's about 9.30. Uh, please excuse me, I'll uh, better be in bed. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, March break. Anyway, thank you so much and have a great March break. You as well, my friend. All the very best. Uh, Abacar, uh, I would like to give you some tips on how a person can be careful with speed limit signs. Thank you. Uh, Abacar, basically, you just, you know, look farther down the road, pick out the speed signs. And if you're preparing for a driver's test, practice in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test. That way you're gonna know what the speed signs are. Now, if you're in Canada, it's fairly straightforward. It's 50 kilometers an hour unless otherwise posted in the city. So if you're not sure, drive 50 kilometers an hour. Outside of the city, it's 80 kilometers an hour unless otherwise posted. 
it's more or less the same in the states it's 30 miles an hour in the city i mean unless you're in new york and other places where it's 25 miles an hour usually it's 50 miles an hour out on the highways outside of city areas if you're unsure and you want the specific information about your state in the u.s head over to the smart drive test website click the frequently asked questions at the top of the on the menu there and pick your state or province and you can and there in the list of frequently asked questions is the speed limits for inside the city and outside the city in your specific state so if you're in maryland just pick maryland and then go in and have a look and you'll be able to find those specific speed limits uh, for your state or province okay fabian the best advice is not to overthink it it's so much easier than actually seems <laughs> uh, i know that that is that is great advice fabian too many times in my life i have overthought too many things okay uh practice with cones corey's put that video up for you that's excellent Saklim, I uh, use my instructor's Toyota Prius for my road test. Yes, and the Prius is another excellent vehicle for doing your driver's test. It's a, it's a good size and uh, will you know you'll be able to easily maneuver around parking lots and do slow slow speed maneuvers and those types of things. Fabian, I live in California and all we did was drive around and then pull up to a curb and reverse straight back and then I got my license. Yes, in California and Fabian, congratulations on passing your driver's test. That's awesome. And as you said, <laughs> uh, as you said, uh, California, you drive around and then it's 50 feet straight line backing along a curb. California is one of the places that that is a requirement for their driver's test. The other state is the state of Maryland. Uh, they require two point reverse turn, which is pulling up past a road and then backing around the corner. Uh, I also think Kentucky does that one as well. Uh, somebody might be able to help me out here uh, on one of the smart drivers here on the channel or if you're watching on the replay you know leave a comment down in the comment section there that really helps out as well okay uh, Jim Bob I was 10 years and going to drive a fire truck uh, Jim Bob that's awesome uh, that's great dedication uh, in learning how to f drive a fire truck for a living that's really great Fa uh, okay so we did that one and my friend Tim is here from drive smart BC uh, if you want to know anything about driving, legislation, policing, uh, the culture of driving, uh, check out uh, Tim's website, Drive Smart BC. A excellent, excellent resource uh, with a really active uh, forum with uh, experts in the field uh, over there. And uh, have a look at what he says. And he says he was fooled by daylight savings times. I'm sure you're not the, the only one, Tim, that was uh, fooled by daylight savings times. And Corey's put up the links to the frequently asked questions for both Canada and the United States. So have a look at those if you have any questions, frequently asked questions about your driver's test. And those are an excellent resource for you. And if you, there's any questions that you don't find the answers to there, let me know. Send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com, and we'll definitely help you out. Uh, <clears throat> Excellent. And uh, Gandhi says it was an excellent resource on the frequently asked questions. He went through all the questions and answers for the state of Illinois. Excellent. And thank you so much for that compliment. Sakleem, also I was fortunate that my examiner allowed me to talk to him, uh, do running commentary, but didn't miss any of his directions he had asked. Excellent. Bars are hazards. Uh, <laughs> Backing into an intersection, yes, backing into, it can't type today. <laughs> yes, do not back up at an intersection. If you back up on any, I'll start over again. If you back up at an intersection during a driver's test, it's an automatic fail. If you back up in an intersection at any other time, it's incredibly dangerous because it's considered, a, it's uh, it's an unpredictable action and other people are not expecting you to back up at the intersection so I see lots of people who when I'm crossing the road and they drove too far in the intersection and they're across the crosswalk don't back up <laughs> don't back up let the pedestrian walk around you yes it's a little bit embarrassing but don't back up it's more dangerous for you to back up than it is to, for you to stay there across the crosswalk so don't do that all right don't do that Okay, uh, and Tim's put up the link to, uh, <clears throat> I'm having a brain cramp. <laughs> uh, 
Corey's put up the link to Tim's website. My brain is not working on full throttle here. That's probably because of the daylight savings times, which freaking out my head here. DC, is it not legal to overtake on dotted yellow? I get honked at. Uh, no, DC, it's not illegal. It's only illegal if you have a double solid. That prohibits passing, and it's not safe. Uh, Warwagon, saw your video on parallel parking. Uh, you said it's not a fail if you hit the curb, but my girlfriend took her road test, and they said if she hits the curb, it's a fail on her road test. Uh, so what are the exact rules? Yes, uh, <laughs> it is an automatic fail if you hit the curb and knock the examiner out of his or her seat. It's also an automatic fail if you push the rear tire up over the curb. It's not an automatic fail if you touch the curb. Okay, if you touch the curb and readjust. The problem is, is that most people... Most people taking a driver's test are extremely nervous. They don't have a high level of experience. And because they don't have a lot high level of experience, they don't just touch the curb. They bang into the curb and knock the examiner out of his or her seat. If you do that, yes, in fact, it is a fail. Okay, but if you touch the curb and readjust, no, it's not a fail. Unfortunately, most drivers on a driver's test are not just going to touch the curb. They're going to bang into it. And yes, that is a fail. Okay. Uh, JT, what if I am in the crosswalk and the pedestrian slides across the hood of my car like in the movies? Uh, JT, <laughs> most people are not that flexible, nor are most people that in that good of shape. Because it takes, you know, <laughs> and if they do, hopefully you got your dash cam on because that would just be the coolest thing and that video would go viral and you probably would never have to work again in your life. <laughs> I would love to see somebody try that. Uh, Roberto, I passed my Massachusetts driver's test recently. Thank you for the advice. Roberto, you're most welcome. Uh, Jim Bob, bars are really hazard to the road. I'm not sure what, I, I'm not following what you mean by that. Bars are bars. Uh, okay. Abacar, okay. It would be nice listening to you, my friend. Thank you. Bye. Okay. All the best and have a great night, my friend. Uh, Gordon, Rick, should we have more roundabouts here in Canada? They look daunting to a new driver, but are su surprisingly simple to use. <laughs> uh, Gordon, yes, we should have more roundabouts. I think that every four-way stop should be made into a roundabout. I love roundabouts. I think they're awesome. And also, a couple of benefits to roundabouts. Uh, roundabouts reduce urban noise pollution because cars are not coming to a full stop. They're simply slowing down and then proceeding through. Uh, there are less points of conflict in a roundabout. So in other words, they, the number of traffic crashes in a roundabout is less compared to a four-way stop or a, you know, conventional intersection. And then finally, uh, roundabouts move more traffic, more vehicles per hour through the intersection than a conventional intersection. So there's huge benefits to roundabouts in urban environments. So I'm a huge advocate of them. Uh, but about about a Tim, uh, surprising how many drivers think they cannot pass over a single solid yes yellow line. You're absolutely right about that, Tim. Most drivers think that a single solid means that they can't pass, and you can pass with caution. It's double solid that prohibits passing. All right, uh, Gordon, should we have more roundabout? Yes, so Carrie answered that one. Uh, War wagon, you're most welcome, my friend. Happy to hear we can help out. Uh, Kayla, what gear should truck be in while turning right and before ending the intersection on a driver's test? Okay, are you talking about, Kayla, are you talking about a big truck? Because if it's a big truck like a 10-speed, 13-speed, or an 18-speed, I usually recommend third gear for a right-hand turn in a big truck. Okay, Gordon, bars are brutal. Uh, still not... Uh, Okay, so are we talking about bars of steel or are we talking about pubs, as in bars? Not really sure. Okay. Um, so, Corey's put up the video on how to drive through a roundabout. Thank you for that. Uh, con, sir, 50 is the speed limit. Can I drive 45 or 55? No, you can't. You have to stay as close to the speed limit as you can. All right. You can be kind of up and down two or three kilometers an hour, but you have to realize that your speed control is directly linked to your observation. So every eight to 12 seconds, you are looking far down the road, in checking your center mirror, far down the road, in checking your instrument panel, far down the road, checking your wing mirror, far down the road, both shoulders, 
checking the other wing mirror and then repeating that every eight to 12 seconds. So every eight to 12 seconds, you are checking your instrument panel. And when you're checking your instrument panel, you should be adjusting your speed. So your speed should be being adjusted every kind of eight to 12 seconds in conjunction, in tandem with your scanning pattern. So uh, Corey will put the video up for you on speed management. So have a look at that and that'll help you out with getting your speed just right for the purposes of your driver's test. Okay, <laughs> Jim Bob, thank you for clarifying that. Yes, bars, pubs where people drink beer. Yes, I know <laughs> we're all on the same page. Awesome. Uh, Gordon, what would you take from 1980s road etiquette that you would like to see return today? Uh, 1980s road etiquette. I'm not really sure about the 1980s, Gordon. I don't think there was a whole lot of good stuff going on in the 80s in terms of road et etiquette. Uh, Irfan, uh, thank you very much. Your suggestions and sharing knowledge is amazing. My parallel parking is excellent because of your videos. Uh, question for today is how to judge distance when we pull over beside the curb. Excellent question. Okay, so how do you judge the distance on that side of the vehicle? Go to the parking lot, get some pylons, those one meter, 36 inch tall pylons and work with those. And Corey will put up the video for you on slow speed maneuvers. Or look at the second lesson with Gavin. And we did slow speed maneuvers and we worked with the pylons. And that was one of the things that I was teaching Gavin was where his vehicle was in space and place in relation to his car to kind of figure out where that blind area was on that side of the vehicle. And if you work with those taller pylons, then you can actually see them and get a sense of where that side of the vehicle is. And then once you go out and start working with, you know, parking along the curb, that's going to be much easier as well. There's a video I just put up a little while ago, how to back along a curb. And I show you the same thing in that video as well. So have a look at that one as well. Okay. All right, uh, Goose, I teach my students to use their signals if they have to cross over a solid yellow, but it depends on the geographical context. Uh, Goose, uh, you're absolutely right, uh, because even if, even if the student has to move out of their lane into the other lane, even partially to go around another driver or road user or a fixed object, they still have to signal out of their lane. If they're moving out of their lane in the least, Mirror signal shoulder check over and then mirror signal shoulder check back. You absolutely have to teach them that because if they don't, uh, there are some driving examiners who will uh, assign significant demerits for that. And uh, we had a ch we have a chunk of road up here north of Vernon, which was part of the CDL, the truck driver test route. And same thing, we had, there was a lot of pedestrians along that roadway and it was just a shoulder and of course you had to move over to get a, to give some space between you and the pedestrian and of course you have to teach the student you know mirror signal shoulder check over and then mirror signal shoulder check and move back and then of course three flashes on the signal before moving the vehicle and those types of things okay so yeah exactly yeah you got to teach the student that uh Gordon, you were drinking, got in your vehicle and drove. Okay, so let's let's just talk about drinking and driving since that's kind of one of the sub conversations that's going on here in the comments. Okay, so just as a note, and if, if Tim's still here, uh, Tim will probably weigh in on this as well. So one of the things that I suggest to you because drinking and driving, doesn't matter which country in the world you're in, is a serious traffic offense, okay? Here in Canada, it's charged under the criminal code, but in the United States of America and other countries in the world, it's charged under the Highway Traffic Act. In Canada, I've talked to numerous people who have been charged with drinking and driving, and their defense to get off, even though they were not convicted and found guilty, their defense was $8,000, eight to $10,000, just to hire a lawyer and have that lawyer get them off the ticket. So if you're thinking of drinking and driving and you're thinking of going to the pub and having more than one drink, whether it's a, a pint of beer or a glass of wine or you know a shot, my advice to you is, is that next time you do that, think of it this way. Even if you live a fair distance away from the pub and it's $50 to get on a cab and take a cab home, uh, two, a week later, two weeks later, $50 is going to seem really, really cheap compared to an $8,000 defense because you blew over on a breathalyzer test 
and the police impounded your vehicle, you know, took your license away and now you had to walk. Think of how much inconvenience that is. Even if you're found not guilty, if you're not convicted of the crime, it's an incredible burden on you. And compared to $50 to take a cab and get your mate to drive you back the next day to the parking lot and pick up your car, you know, 50 bucks is really not, not a lot. So I really implore you, I really counsel you, if you're having more than one at the pub, then, you know, consider seriously having the 50 bucks to take a cab home or walk home or get a mate to pick you up or those types of things. Just leave your car there and come back and get it the next day. All right, I'm done. Margaret, uh, one side guy, so drunk, stumbling down the street, then got into a car and drove off. Uh, didn't have my phone on me. Hope he didn't kill anyone. And yes, unfortunately, Margaret, that happens. Uh, yeah, drinking and driving is serious. Jim Bob, uh, you are in an intersection when the light is red. Is that an immediate fail? Uh, Jim Bob, it's not an immediate fail if you clear the intersection. You must clear that intersection. So uh, really, you should be watching as you're in the intersection and the light. You know that the light is going to turn yellow, right? You have the walk signs. You should be watching the walk sign. The walk sign has gone to the hand that you're not going to cross anymore. The traffic's coming. You've been there for a while. You know it's going to go yellow, and you're starting to move straight into the intersection. And as soon as that light turns yellow and you've checked and triple checked that the oncoming traffic on the other side is going to come to a stop, then you proceed. But you should be able to get through the intersection before it's a red. But watch the video on uh, left turns and you'll see that there's a pickup truck that gets stuck in the intersection on the red light. Uh, and an excellent example of having to clear the intersection, okay? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Shen, my driving, my instructor in driving school teach me a skill for back parking, but instructor I hired uh, teach me another skill. Which one should I choose during the final exam? Uh, Shen, you should choose the one that works for you, the one that you find easiest to use and the one that works for you most of the time, because that's the one I want that you should pick. Okay, uh, Gandhi, if you enter on green or yellow, it may not be a fail. Yes, exactly. Okay, uh, Warwagon, how picky are road test instructors on your uh, hand movement on the steering wheel on the road test? Uh, war wagon, they're not too picky on that. So if you choose to do hand to hand as opposed to hand over hand, they're not going to pick on you for that. Uh, you do have to keep two hands on the steering wheel for the duration of your test though. Okay. The only time you can take your hand off the steering wheel is if, uh, you're changing gears in a manual transmission, which you probably won't if you're in North America. Okay. Akram, I failed for signaling before one road of my turns is, is that make me fail? Uh, Akram, there's, there's probably some other stuff that you failed for as well. Uh, did you fail immediately or did you demerit, did you accumulate too many demerits to, to warrant the pass? Uh, Gordon, I only had one pint, but I can't say that my rugby coach had less. He had eight and drove four of his players home. Oh, nice. Not so nice that, yeah, <laughs> not good. Uh, Margaret. Okay, to keep my hands movement consistent because the examiner might think you don't have control of the car if your hands are erratic. Excellent point. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, Tim, I have no time or sympathy for people who drink and drive. I've in investigated too many crashes. Yes, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Tim with Drive Smart BC is a retired police constable. So unfortunately, these are the first responders. These are the people that see the consequences of crashes. And, you know, you know, traffic crashes are, they're awful things. They're absolutely awful things. I mean, even if you don't sustain injury, even if you don't, there's no death in the traffic crash, you're still without your car for a month at least before it gets fixed. And now you're walking and those types of things. Not to mention the trauma and the shock of being involved in a traffic crash. Uh, a friend of mine, you know, uh, had a traffic crash, single vehicle traffic crash with a telephone pole uh, 18 months ago, still recuperating, still going to physiotherapy and massage therapy for soft tissue damage in the neck uh, because of that traffic crash. So know that traffic crashes are lethal. They're, you know, and if, like I said, if you're lucky, you walk away from it. My friend did walk away from it, but still sustaining, still suffering long-term consequences because of that crash. So know that. Okay, uh, Epic, 
If you want to pass a CDL road test, do you need to know regulatory signs like no entry for certain vehicles and smaller white signs for no unloading? Uh, you don't need to know uh, those kinds of signs, Epic, but one of the things I would suggest you have a look at is have a look at the 11 signs for CDL drivers, and that'll give you a good sense of the road signs that you need to know kind of at a higher level uh, when you're driving truck and trailer, okay? uh tim many driving establishments are part of a hotel a room is cheap compared to the alternative and you know that's exactly right uh what tim is saying and you know it's it's not just drinking and driving it's marijuana you know smoking marijuana or being tired uh, a couple of years ago i went to vancouver island i have a rental property as some of you know on vancouver island it's five hours away uh there was one day i drove to vancouver island did whatever I needed to do. And then I was driving back the same day and I got to Chilliwack, which is about an hour from the ferry. It was about midnight and I hit the wall. I was tired. I had no business being behind the wheel of a vehicle, pulled into a hotel, the hotel, you know, it was 200 bucks. You know, and I basically stayed there until six in the morning when I got up and went down and had breakfast and left. But you know, and I know for a lot of you that $200 is a lot of money. $200 is a lot of money for a hotel room for six hours. But you know something? Two years later, I'm still here. And it's the same thing with what Tim was saying about, you know, many drinking establishments have hotels nearby. Uh, you know, go and spend 100 bucks or 150 bucks for a hotel room. It's pretty cheap. Or, you know, a cab home or those types of things. It's, it's really inexpensive. And the other thing that I would suggest to you is, is, you know, make your decisions for transportation before you start drinking, not after you started drinking, because then it's too late. We're not thinking clearly, you know, okay. Uh, Dazzle, uh, greetings from Edmonton. I passed my driver's test a month ago. I wanted to thank you for getting, guiding us new drivers through your videos. And you are most welcome, my friend. So glad that we could help out. Uh, Gordon, do you think roads should be privatized so that they can put drunk drivers on a black list, which states, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen, Gordon, unfortunately. Uh, you know, the system is what it is. It's just not going to help. It's not going to, it's not going to change. We're not going to privatize it. Uh, Grace, I feel so bad for the people who get their cars wrecked because of someone else. Like they could be a job without their car. Yeah, exactly. No, I hear you for sure. Okay. So just to reiterate real quick here. Nope. I had it. I had it. Okay, t-shirts. I've been working on t-shirts. So have a look. Here's the back. Uh, here's the front of the t-shirt and the link is there. I'll stick it back up again. There's the front. I'm working on a couple of more t-shirts. Uh, these are the v-necks for women and there's different colors. Uh, you can choose your color, what color you want for the t-shirt. Uh, the men's uh, here, blue, black, and red. Uh, this is the front of the t-shirt, the back of the t-shirt. Again, so I've got those up there. Uh, here's the link. And like I said, I'm working on a couple of more designs and I'll put those up for you and get those going. Asden, uh, thanks man. You helped me pass my driver's test with no mistakes. Congratulations on a perfect score on your driver's test. That's awesome. So check out the t-shirts. Uh, I didn't get back over here. So there we go. And I don't think that I put the t-shirts up there. I was showing you the t-shirts and didn't put, change the screen over. <laughs> anyway, you can have a look at them at your, at your leisure there and uh, look at those. Uh, Margaret, you can also pull into a Walmart parking lot, lock the car and fall asleep if you can't continue. Yes, that's another thing you can do. And <laughs> Margaret, I've definitely done that in uh, rest areas and those types of things. Had a few, a bit of kip. DC, I watched your videos about parallel parking and got a lot better at it. Excellent. Uh, Gandhi, I saw so many accidents happen due to high speeds. All vehicles should be limited uh to say 30 miles to save lives <laughs> that's not gonna happen gandhi that's not gonna happen that's not something that's gonna happen and Corey's put up the video there on managing fatigue there uh warwig in the town i live in they fired uh the road test instructor because he failed everyone up to six times but they have new people now much better uh yeah that's yeah that's war wagon when somebody's doing that they're definitely going to not have that person there uh, Nico, 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 Nuke. 
Okay, Nico, Nico, new. How can I pass my driver's test, Rick? Uh, look at the videos here on the channel. Know that the four components of any driver's test, speed management, space management, observation, and communication. So what I would suggest to you, Nico, is have a look. Corey will put the video, the playlist on beginners, uh, learning how to drive a car for beginners. Get started there, and that will help you out. And... Van Halle, I watched all your videos, passed my class five driver's test last week. Congratulations, that is awesome. Okay, so again, check out the t-shirts. <laughs> Excited about that. If you have any questions or I didn't answer your question, leave a comment down in the comment section. We'll get to you there and uh, do what we can to help you out. And if you passed the driver's test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on passing your driver's test. That's awesome. And uh, if you've got a driver's test coming up in the next day or two or this week, all the best, good luck on that, and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now. I've got a Wait, can I say something quickly? Um, I, I wanted to say something. Okay, go ahead. I um, helped my dad with the women's shirt. <laughs> yes. Because I am the only female around this house. Okay, you don't have to yell. The microphone's right there. Who cares? Okay, so I'm yes. The only female around this house. We need a new women. A new okay, woman okay, around stop. This house. Stop. Okay, we're all done. <laughs> all right, so yes, Scout helped me with the shirts, so that was really great. So thanks so much. Because I'm the only female in the house. So I'm need to okay, get a new okay, you're done. Thanks so much. Have a good night. All the best. Okay. <laughs>